Hello, brethren. My name is Russell DeGiorgio. I'm a minister with the Media Church of Christ in Media PA. I'm also the director of Northeast Institute of Evangelism. It's good to be with you. I don't know if it's morning, evening, whenever you're showing the video. I just am grateful that I'm able to come into your place and speak with you for just a little while about connecting with others. The lesson is how to connect with, with others. And uh, it's a challenging thing that we've got to do, isn't it? Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things. Jesus said, whatsoever I've commanded you and long with you always, even to the end. It's challenging. It, 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 it takes a lot of work, but I hope, I'm hopeful that today we'll learn just a few things and maybe these things you've already known, just haven't applied, but we, we will consider a few things from 1 Peter. You know, the epistles are about the living of Christ. The gospels, the life of Christ, or biographies concerning his life. And then we have the book of Acts, which is the preaching of Christ. And conversions, we see people being converted. And then churches obviously being established. And then letters would go out to more than several of these congregations. And we call them the epistles. And we have the living of Christ. And when we look at First Peter, it's about suffering. It's about our Lord and us and suffering and, and dealing with that suffering. Many scholars would say that First Peter is to the New Testament what Job is to the Old Testament. And it's interesting that in this uh, letter, we find some things that will help us to be able to connect with others better. Connection. Are you connected? Are you connected with God, number one? Being connected with God. Are you desiring the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby? Are you remembering the hope that is laid up for you in heaven? This great place where we will be one day. Do you think about that? Peter would go on to say in Chapter one, verse 13, that we need to gird up the loins of our minds, be sober. As obedient children, don't be conformed to your old self. Are you still conformed to your old self? You know, if we're gonna connect with others, we have first got to be connected with God. He would go on to say in chapter one, be ye holy as I am holy, Jesus said. Um, separated, not living like the world around us, not continuing to live that way. If we want to connect with others, I want you to write this down. The first thing we need to do is be connected with God. There has to be some changes in our lives. It's interesting that in chapter four of First Peter, He'll talk about that folks around you will think you're kind of strange because you don't hang around with them in the same flood of dissipation as they, you know, the drinking parties, the, the things that you, that way you, way you used to act and the things you used to do. They think it's strange you don't run with them anymore. Uh, change has got to be made. I know when I was first converted, that was one of the first things that my bandmates, when I played in the rock and roll band, they, what's, what's up with Ross? He's changed. He's not the same. Change needs to take place, but that wakes them up. Makes people wonder who you are, what's happened, you see. This is the beginning of connections because it, you're disconnecting yourself from the old way of life and that wakes people up and you're connecting yourself with God and you're wanting, and your speech is to change, right? First Peter chapter three, and that's where we'll focus for a little while. First Peter chapter three, but I just, in looking over the letter and reading it more than several times, you see it's really about behaviors, obviously the changes that have to be made in us. Paul would say that we need to have a walk worthy of which we've been called, Ephesians chapter four, verses one and following. And Peter talks about these behaviors that we should be uh, mindful that when we do good, it's commendable before God if we suffer for it. We've been called to this. Jesus is the hoop of grammaton. He's the underwriting. It's like 
when you go to write uh, as a kindergarten student uh, and you go over, I know many kids do not learn cursive anymore, but, uh, or even printing, but you, you have those dashes, uh, you have the alphabet that's in, 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 in dashed lines and you write over top of that. Well, Jesus is the hoopagrammaton and, and the underwriting and we're to, we're to follow in his footsteps. Follow after that writing. Live like him. And, and, and indeed, we will suffer for doing good. Let's just take the time to read through the letter and see how many times he mentions doing good or do good. And because you, who can harm you for doing good? And, well, you will be harmed. I mean, people, if they're just rubbing you the wrong way because they see that you're constantly doing things that are good and you're always a jovial person, they may not like you because of that. You can get some persecution. But persecution is coming hard because our government is now trying to shove communism or Marxism down our throats. We've got to be aware, brethren, that it is time, it's well past time that we're making more and more connections so that souls can be saved. Peter would say in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, sanctify the Lord Jesus in your heart. So we're talking about that right now. We're talking about a behavior where we're setting Christ aside in our hearts and we're thinking about the great salvation where rest our hope upon that grace that he's given us. First Peter chapter one, that we have a place waiting for us, something reserved in heaven for us, though we may go through various trials and we do. But in our trials, if we're focused on God and remembering that first and foremost, and then we think as children, as obedient children, changing our behaviors. Chapter two, desiring the pure milk of the word that we may grow, you see. And then of course, remembering that we're to abstain from fleshly lusts that war against the soul. We're to submit to the will of God. And we've been called to this. When you get to chapter three, you see, he says, finally, brother, in chapter three, verse eight, I want you to turn with me there and let's focus a little of our time there. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing, knowing that you were called to this that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile and let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord, excuse me, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed and do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled, but sanctify, here we go, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. We're talking about connection there. We're talking about connection back in verse eight. By the way that we treat each other, love as brothers, be tenderhearted. If you have somebody come into the congregation and we're not loving the way that we should be, if we're not being courteous with one another, brethren, if we don't start there, we're going to have trouble doing it with other people to make those connections. When we think about connection, again, we're thinking about our connection to God, number one. Are you connected with God? Number two, has your behavior changed with your brethren? Are you connected with your brethren? Connection with God first. Note that. Connection with your brethren second. So that you can connect with others third. The connection with others is not going to happen if you're not connecting with each other. Well, I know brethren through the years. In fact, there was a brother I taught in the school here. Um, He went back to his home congregation and he was teaching. He was baptized a lot of folks. And he kept telling me, he said, Brother Russell, he said, our congregation is not reaching out to these folks. They're, they're not being loving. They're not even loving each other the way that they should. Well, brethren, it's going to be very hard to grow the church that way. 
home mission, what it's all about is to help your congregation grow, not only spiritually, but physically. And there must be an effort and a consistency in us to continue in his word that we may grow thereby. Amen? It's gonna happen. So if we're connected with God, number one, through study of his word, abstaining from fleshly lusts, not running in the same way we used to, the same dissipation that Peter speaks about in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, not living that way, changing our behaviors. People will see good in us. People will see good in us. I want you to stop right here for a moment. Personal application again. I want you to think about, because we're talking about community, we're talking about church when he says in verse eight of chapter three, finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion, love as brothers, be tenderhearted, be courteous, not returning evil for evil. So he's talking about the character within the congregation. Brothers, I want you to sit, I want you to, Shut the video down for just a moment. And I want you to think about things that you need to work on personally between each other. Now, think about yourself first and then what you can work on yourself. And I, I should say that for each of you, write down a little list of some things that you could work on that will help you to be a better brother or sister in Christ right now so that you're connecting with each other better first because you got to connect with God first in his word. What does the word teach you about connecting with each other? You might want to look at Ephesians chapter four, Colossians chapter three and following, Ephesians chapter four and following, your connection with each other. How are you doing with that? So if you're not doing well, it's going to be hard to connect with others. Take some time to do that. You can stop the video. I want you to think about this too. I want you to think about speech. So vital, obviously, right? When we're reaching out to others. Now, Peter says it this way. He says, verse 10 of chapter three, he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. Do you have, do, have you had change in your speech patterns? Now, some of you may be new Christians say, no, I haven't worked on that much. Some of you may be older Christians and say, I got to work on a lot more. But it's one thing to be in the church building and how you talk. It's another to be outside and hear people t the way you talk. How are you talking on the outside? And look, I, if you've been in the Christ a long time, say, yeah, I used, I used to have better speech. Well, there's a problem, right? We got to work on ourselves Con consistently. This is the problem. Change. Turn with me to Colossians chapter four. I know years ago, one of the brothers I knew when I was at school said that there was a lady in the congregation that wanted to reach out to folks, but he realized, and he had found out through other brethren that, you know, her speech patterns weren't good. She was just cursing too much and it wasn't helping for her reaching out. She said, oh, I want to do what you do. I want to evangelize. And, I'm, and he had to tell her, sister, I want you to pay attention to this verse and I want you to pray on it. Colossians chapter four, verses two and following. Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Meanwhile, praying also for us that the that God would open a door for us for the word to be uh, to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak walk in wisdom notice verses five and six walk in wisdom toward those who are outside redeeming the time let your speech always be with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each one and so if our speech patterns are not good and we we just haven't changed that way. We're not going to connect with others very well, especially when you say, <laughs> are you worried about them? Do you love them? Jesus said what? Love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your what? Neighbor as yourself. And if you're concerned about, and we got to be so concerned about it today, don't we? So many things are changing and fast. People need Christ. They need to hear it. They need God's word so they can think logically. When Peter says, desire the pure milk of the word, the pure logicon, the, the Greek, God's word is reasonable. It makes sense. And people need to hear the word of God more than ever today. 
Each of us should be like the early church. Everyone went about what? Preaching the word. They scattered in the early church and everyone went about preaching the word. Well, our lives should be that living example first. Number one, we're connected to God. Number two, we're connecting with each other because we're treating each other properly. First Peter chapter three, verse eight. And then number three, we're thinking about others around us and we speak no guile. Our words are like salt, give good seasoning. This needs to happen, brothers, sisters. We're not going to be connecting with others the way we should, the way we can. We're not opening up those doors because they don't see a change in us. People need to see a change in you. First Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, really worked in my life to where I didn't even know. A brother brought it to my attention years later that this is what you were doing. So you weren't running in the same way that they were anymore. You changed. You changed from a rock and roll lifestyle to a Christian lifestyle. And when you did that, People saw the change in you. And guess what? Because I was disconnecting from those old things and connecting with God, people saw something in me and will gravitate towards that. And some did. Not all people will. Some people won't like you for it, but other people will gravitate to you. Opening up doors for connections, you see. So number one, connecting with God. Number two, connecting with your brethren. Number three, easier to connect with others when your speech has changed and you're praying. What does Peter say? He says in 1 Peter chapter 3, he says, verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. He's quoting Psalm, I believe it's Psalm 34. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. I want to make connections with others. Am I praying about making those connections? If I'm living a righteous life, I'm connected with God, I'm praying for connections, then uh, I'll present those connections. I'll present people in front of me that I can connect with, that will be looking and searching. You don't always know. You don't always know. I know when I first came here to do this work uh, in media, I started working at a, uh, a blind center, which really became a, a place for folks to live that that had uh, mental difficulties, various uh, handicaps and so on and so forth. And um, I was reaching out to this girl and uh, it took me a while, but I would go and teach uh, some courses there in their lobby, in her like community room and uh, was making connections with her. And I was praying about it and she saw the truth. It took, a little, it took a few months, about six months. And then she obeyed the truth after I taught there several times and I taught her, I ended up having personal Bible studies with her and she obeyed the gospel. She's still a sister in Christ today. And it took time, but God was, I know he was listening to my prayers, trying to do what was right. We're not gonna be perfect in our, in our lives and we know we pray for forgiveness. But we know that the prayers of the righteous, you know, God's open to those prayers, Peter tells us. But not only that, if we want to make these connections, I want you to think about this. Prayer is important, but doing good. You read through this letter, you'll see over and over that Peter talks about doing good. Uh, just it's prolific. Uh, it's, it's prolific. I, I mean, I'm using the right term. I'm sorry, but it's throughout the letter. When you read through there, you see it over and over. Doing good, do good. You'll be uh, suffering for doing good, but doing good. Now, I want you as a congregation. I want you to think about this. Number one, I want you to think about it individually. What can I do that's good for the connections I already have? That is, what can I do that's good for these various folks that I already know, that I've already connected with? You already wrote a list. Now, what are we going to do as a congregation? Because there needs to be teamwork. There needs to be teamwork. I want you to write these passages down. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, specifically verse 20. I want you to write down 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 
6 through 9. I want you to write down Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. I want you to write down uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. I want you to write down 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 13 through 27. Um, I want you to write down Colossians chapter four, verses seven and following. And I want you to think, brethren, together. And I want you to come up with one word. I want you to shut the video off. Come up with one word that would be represented in all those passages. One word. Take the time to do it right now. Shut the video. Now, what's that one word? For me, I want to look through that. It's always this T E A M, team. Team. You have to do this as a team, connecting with others, not just connecting individually. So, what can you do as a team, connecting with others in the community? I'll give you an idea. And then I want you to, again, cut the video and take some time and write out what you can do together as a team in your community to connect with others. Here's an idea for you. Can you get some t-shirts made with, don't have to be expensive ones, but gather some money together, get some t-shirts made, the Podunk Church of Christ, wherever you live, blank, blank, Church of Christ. I love this church. On the back, Put on it, we care about our community. We care about our community. And then go out into the community with those t-shirts on. Go out and do some good things. Go out to a park, clean up the trash in that area. Go out to a few free streets that need to be cleaned up. Go out as a team. Will that not help you to connect with others? I'm sure it will. People will see you out in the community and they'll say, hey, what are you doing out here? What's going on? Well. And you have a conversation. Remember, the whole thing about connecting is that conversation you want to get into, a loving conversation. So you help lead somebody to Christ. So connecting with others, really behaviors. Again, your behavior, number one, with God. Are you connected with God? Number two, are you connecting with your brethren? Are you loving each other the way, love as brothers? Are you loving the way that you should? Remember John 13, 34 and 35, that love should be focused on each other so that the world may believe that Christ sent it, the love we have for one another. Are we courteous with one another? Then are we courteous with others? People that visit, do they see love amongst us in our congregation? If they see that love, they'll see that they could be part of this group because people are looking for love today. They're looking for godliness. They are searching for it because they don't find it in the world. Amen? So these are ways we connect, you see. Peter has it laid out here. Are we speaking well? Do we refrain our tongue? Are we doing good? Are we praying for those connections? You see, sanctifying the Lord God in our hearts, sanctifying Jesus in our heart, separating ourselves from the worldly mindset, will be a focus upon his word, a desire for that word, feeding on that word that our minds may be changed, that we may have the proper behaviors with each other. And when people see that, it's easier to connect. I'm not saying it's, it's, it's gonna happen that you can make, a lot of us have better personalities than others, let's gotta do face it. Some people are better at connecting with others than, than others in the congregation, but your goal is to connect. And the way you do that is by changing your behavior, number one, with God. Are you focused on God and what he wants you to do? You know, the, the command of making disciples will never change. It's not just about being in the church and growing up in the knowledge of his word. I've seen many congregations that have a great knowledge of his word, but they don't apply it. An application in connecting with others begins with your behavior with God. How are you treating God in daily study in his word? Are you praying to him? Are you praying for those 
new connections that may come? Are you ready because you're desiring his word that you could share a few passages with those that you meet? Not in an immediate way, but over time. I want you to think about that, brethren, time. Team and time, those two words. Team and time, because it takes time. If you win somebody to Christ immediately, you usually don't stay. But if you take time with them and you develop a relationship with them because you're connecting with them, because your speech has changed, because you're doing good for them, you're finding things that are good to do for them, sending a card, praying for them, they have an illness, you say, I'm gonna pray for you, whatever, maybe you're making connections, you see. So my relationship with God first, my connection with my brother and second, my connections with others will come because I'm connected with those two others first, you see. I have, I have a strength in my congregation because we're connected with each other, we're loving each other the way we should. I have a platform from which to work to connect with others. See, God gives you the power to do it. I'm gonna close here. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter three. Ephesians chapter three. I love this passage. It's one of the passages I gave you earlier to look at, but you see, you think you can't do, but you can. I want to encourage you, you can do this. You can make these connections. I'm too shy to know God can work through you. Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, notice this, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. God can work through you. You've got to let him. Yeah, I agree. And you say, well, I fight with it. Let him work through you. One person can do so much good in the congregation. If you let him work through you, connecting with him daily in prayer, prayers of the righteous availeth much, James chapter five. You let, let him work through you. Let yourself be molded into his image. Why call him Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which he says, Luke 6, 46. A disciple will be molded in his master, Luke 6, 40, become like his master. What did Jesus do? He spent time with people, connecting with them every day. You can connect. Let God's power work through you, through his word, through his spirit's word. Connect with your brethren. Love your brethren. Be of one mind, of one accord. Don't be that congregation that's bickering and fighting all the time. You invite somebody to come. You spend a lot of time inviting someone. They come and they see you fighting. They're going to go out that door. They're not going to come back. Love as brothers and sisters in Christ. And of course, your, your personal behaviors are so important. Your speech, how you're speaking. Have you changed that? Really changed it? Focus on that. I want you to write some things down after the lesson today. I want you to go home. I want you to take some time in, in the Bible and the word. But I want you to write some things down. What are some things I need to do? And there's some things I need to repent of that will help me to connect with others better because they may see that sin in your life and they, you know, they can talk about Christ all they want, but they're not connected with God. See, brother, are you, brother and sister, are you connected with God first? Are you connected with your brother? And number three, it's easier for you to connect with others if you have these other two going. You're solid on that. You're studying, you're praying, you're loving your brethren. Now you got a platform from which to work. And then you go to connect with others because of the way you speak to them with grace. Your words are seasoned with salt. They're inviting to other people. Colossians 4, verses 5 and 6. I love you. May God be with you. Let us pray. Our great God, we thank you so very much for all the rich blessings you, you give on to us, Father. We thank you for your word and how it could build us up and make us strong. Help us to be better connectors. Help us to realize how important it is for us to work on our lives first, Father, with you, with our brethren, that it may be easier to connect with others. We thank you so very much for the connections you've already given us. We know that we failed in some of those. We ask that you help us maybe to resurrect those or to continue praying for others that we just uh, haven't been able to break through with yet. But Father, we ask that you help us to meet new people, to encourage them as well. We know it's a tough time with the COVID, but it's time for us to get out of our homes. It's time for us to start making those contacts and doing all that we can. 
to um, connect and then help others to come to know you. We know that we fail from time to time. We ask that you forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Give us strength, Father. Watch over us. Bless us all. We ask all these things in your son's precious name we pray. Let the church say, amen. Love you, brethren. God bless.